2 Samuel chapter 12, 13 and 14, here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seats. Today, today we continue, we continue the overall year theme of kingdom authority and we're ministering from the sermon series kingdom conviction and today I want to minister from the sermon topic the necessity of conviction the necessity of conviction church we live in a day when many do not want to feel uncomfortable guilty or convicted what a shame for what God meant to be used to help mankind has become what the devil has used to further separate mankind from God. You see, conviction in the kingdom does not warrant that you serve a prison term or a life sentence for the crime. No, 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 no. Kingdom conviction actually saves you from serving any jail time by warning you, uh-huh, uh, that you have just crossed a divine line of goodness and you are about to enter into a mind field of consequences for your actions. Online Merriam Webster Dictionary defines conviction in the following three ways. Number one, the act or process of finding a person guilty of a crime, especially in a court of law. Law. Number two, the act of convincing a person of error or of compelling the admission of a truth. And number three, the state of being convicted of error or compelled to admit the truth. The essence, church, the essence of being convicted by another is that you have been found guilty. The essence, listen to this, of being self-convicted is that you realize that you are indeed guilty before someone else reveals that you are indeed guilty. All right, all right. Church, this is beautiful. We have resident within us the blessed Holy Spirit. He is the divine paracletus or the enabling power of God himself who leads us into all truth so that when we miss truth and cry unto him, he teaches us where we missed it, where we messed up, so that we can get it right before we are publicly exposed as a convict. Hmm. Conviction, self-conviction, it's a beautiful thing. To understand that within us is the Holy Spirit and that he will always lead us into truth if we obey him. That's what's truly amazing. God's ways are holy and God's Holy Spirit teaches us and trains us to be holy. It is the teaching, it is the training. So here and there you will miss it. <laughs> You'll miss it. Yet as you sit under the teaching of the Holy Spirit, you miss it less and less. What you used to do 10 years ago, you ought not be doing it today. Why not? Because the conviction got you straight. Hmm. You know, Holy Spirit just dropped in the fact that he said, in, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. I'm thinking that the reason that the Holy Spirit has to be poured out in the last days is because in the last days, there's going to be so much that you are told, you ain't got to worry about that. You ain't got to be convicted about that. You're all right. But if you've got the Holy Spirit, ah, the resident partner of God himself, God will let you know when you've gone too far. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Hmm. Well, what you were doing five years ago, you ought no longer be doing because the divine one who convicts you got you straight. What you were doing last year, uh, you no longer do that because the divine one who convicts the blessed Holy Spirit has retrained you out of foolishness and placed you into the wisdom of the kingdom, the wisdom with understanding. Conviction is necessary. Sin will convict you. And so the Holy Spirit desires that you conquer sin and do not become a permanent convict or hostage to the things of this world. Perhaps I can celebrate right here with one, two, or a few of you that what you used to do, you don't do that anymore. That even when it crosses your mind, there's something, there's something, there's someone, there's someone, the Holy Ghost says, no, you don't, don't you go back, don't you do that, you don't want to experience the consequences of that. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, conviction is necessary. Today we will look at a familiar account of when God's servant was not self-convicted. In so doing, well, let's cover the following three points. Point number one, he did it, the crime. He did it, the crime. Point number two, he missed it, the conviction. He missed it, the conviction. And then point number three, he got it, the consequences. He got it, the consequences. So let's deal with it. Point number one, he did it, the crime. God is interesting in how he allowed biblical history to be told. God is purposeful in how he records occurrences. He does all things on purpose. God does not do anything just to do it. God does not waste time. He is constantly teaching. The main focus of our text is David. David, king of Israel. David, who was trained in how to keep sheep, not kill sheep. David, who was trained in how to fight for right, not arrange a fight for wrong. David, who played instruments to calm the soul of another, not played games to the detriment of others. This is David, the king beloved, not a conniving lover. This is David, the mighty warrior, not David, the man who would stay at home during the height of the times when king went out to war on the battlefield. He did it, did what? He, he missed the mark. He sinned, he, he slept with another man's wife and then arranged for the murder of that man. Can you believe that the songwriter, poetic voice of Israel, the sweet psalmist David was now a murderer? Lord have mercy. Oh, what a moment without God's spirit. You see, don't look at David now and think that David is so far from you, is so far from me. Because anytime I, anytime we operate outside of the restraints of the Holy Spirit, anything, anything, Anything is possible. Hmm. Church, when you feed your emotions and placate to your flesh, you too will find yourself doing things. Worse than that, you'll find yourself doing things and you won't even realize that you've done something catastrophic that now has shifted your very mindset, heart set, and destiny. That's it right there. I'm not going to look at the sin. I'm going to understand that whatever it is that caused you to miss it is trying to take away your destiny. That resident within every child of God. No, take it far of the semen. Resident within every born person that God breathed in the breath of life. God's breath contains purpose. His breath contains meaning. His breath contains destiny. And when we walk outside of the breath of God, what? The wind, sweet Holy Spirit, that wind, then we miss the very heart of God. Church, I can imagine that after the adultery took place and after the murder took place that God shook his majestic head in heaven and cringed at the sinful error of his beloved servant. 
He was a servant because he served God with his whole heart. And when he turned his heart to self-service, he there missed the heart of God. Can I tell you that we've got to still crucify flesh. We've still got to deny our flesh. We've still got to admit, yep, I know I'm right. I want to be right. I hope I'm right. But really, none of that matters, God. God, what matters is what you say, God. Because, God, you are ultimately right. Mm. Interesting. Humanity is interesting. We commit kingdom crimes and believe that we've actually gotten away with it. That's what blows me away. Like God. Omniscient. Got away with that one. Go. Somehow you think that God is winking. You know, God winked. So just that the wink is when you did what you did and said, God missed it. No, no, God didn't. Mm -mm. Uh, that God is your ace boy, your bosom body, your cover, no matter what. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I want you to look at something with me. It's mighty interesting. God begins this chapter, chapter 12, with a singular, powerful word. He begins this chapter 12 with a singularly powerful word. And the word, well, and the word is, and. Take a look at verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Church, what this tells you and I is that it may be a new chapter. However, it begins based on the old happening. Something that happened before, it isn't finished yet. <laughs> you may think that you turned the page, but until God deals with what was on the previous page, you have not moved on. That's why, let me tell you, it's so important that we deal with, with what's been on our previous pages. Yes, Lord, I did it. I confess it. Because if you don't deal with the previous pages, you keep on going from one chapter to the next, it's going to pop up. And somebody's going to remind you, remember your chapter 11? Somebody's going to come up with a video. I got video of your chapter 11. Somebody going to have an email. I got email of your chapter 11. Can I encourage the body of Christ to lay it all on the altar? <laughs> that whatever you've done in the past, whatever you've experienced in the past, we serve a great God. He's a forgiving God. He's a mighty God. Place it on the altar. Put it under the blood. The blood still prevails. Put it under the blood. The blood has miraculous power. Put it under the blood. That and is the connector. It's a connector. Connecting the action of David to what will happen right now. What is about to be discussed is because of what went on before this chapter. For it was in chapter 11 that David did it. Look at verse 4 of chapter 11. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned to her house. He did it. He did it. And then verse 15 of chapter 11, it says this, and he wrote in a letter saying, set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. I said he did it. Lord have mercy. How have we become so modern? Have we become so liberated? Do we have so many rights that now we don't confess to God when we do it? You're not asked to confess it to a man. You're not asked to confess it to a woman, to a priest. But my God, if you want it to be covered by the blood of Jesus, you got to go to God. You got to talk to God. Say, God, here I am. God, I admit it and I quit it. God, I did it and I'm going to get rid of it. God, it's in my past now because I have a future. Do I have anybody in this church that understands my future is too great? for me to hang out with my past. My future is greater than what I've been through. The latter shall be greater than the former. That what you've
brought me through God that people will understand I'm not perfect but I'm being perfected I haven't made it but I'm making it I'm on my way to the promised land yeah 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 take take your seat he did it he did it somebody needs to say I did it today say it with me say I did it I did it I did it Uh uh-huh you're here the lightning hasn't struck you you're still able to raise to your feet no matter if you did something yesterday if you put it on the altar I'm telling you that God's saying that now you're clean if you've confessed it if you've repented and said I don't want to go back I'm not going to make that mistake again I'm not going to do it again then you're ready to be a servant of God he's a wonderful God So David, though, David, 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 he missed it. So number two, because he did it, number two, he missed it. He missed the conviction. I told you already, conviction's a beautiful thing. What if I went over and slapped superintendent, just walked away and felt nothing? You'd all be looking at me saying, nah, maybe it's time you know, have a little meeting on the pastor. But it should be something that on my way over, yeah. I back right back up. I don't even make it that far. I say, no, 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 no. You will not ruin my testimony. You will not ruin my purpose. And Holy Ghost now constrain me. Pull me in by your power. It's a powerful thing. But he missed it, the conviction. Church, please understand that what you miss, God marks. God does not miss. It should have been David, the one, huh, the one who knew about God and knew God. This David, the one who called Goliath that uncircumcised Philistine, should have recognized when the spirit of the uncircumcision or the uncircumcised one or the anti-God spirit had actually entered within his own life. We can't speak to others and then not recognize when that very same thing is within us. However, he missed it. Well, God did not. And the best thing is for God to now convict. If not, this is the deep part. You will live on thinking you are right and that you got away with wrong. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That's why I'm telling you, you you know, may not do it right now, but you ought to go home this afternoon and say, thank you for conviction. Thank you, God, that when I was going to do that stupid thing, huh? or oh, God, when I did the stupid thing, huh? I right away said, oh, Lord, what have I done? That's when the spirit of conviction is upon you, so that one more time when you enter into God's house, that you are a legitimate servant of God, and you're free to worship him in spirit and in truth. So, God now has to convict. So, God, God speaks to one who is listening to him. The prophet. Now, don't make me start on this. I said the prophet is speaking to God. Now, not not these modern day prophets. Because they would have been raised to David. Thou art highly blessed, you great musician, you. God's hand is yet upon you, David. You have the favorite one. No, 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 no. See, God straighten up the leader. Straighten up the David. Uh, and God, see, God, God already got it that David, you're not listening to me. Because you know my voice. You know my music. You know my ways. You know. So you have literally turned your back on this convicting moment. So I'm going to give you a little break. I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to talk to somebody who can talk to you. Do we have any elderly saints of God that understand that you ought to be in the right place so that you can speak to somebody else when they're not in the right place? Oh, Lord. God speaks to the true prophet. Not the prophet like today's ones who tell you what you want to hear. Little itching ear. I don't want to hear the direction pastor has. The discipline. No, no. Tell me that nice little thing. That nice little thing. No, Nathan was a prophet who was going to tell you what God spoke in his ear. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Nathan, his name means giver. His name means giver. Nathan was going to give (laughs) 
I, and I can feel Nathan, you know. Because sometimes I don't want to say it. I don't want to do it. I don't. Can't we just, can Nathan just you know, go speak to somebody else? Why you got to go to the leader? Why you got to go to the king? Because you know if you speak to the king, that means the whole kingdom's going to know you spoke. Nathan. Nathan was going to give David exactly what God gave him. The word was not going to be a hit or miss. <laughs> no, no. This word was going to ring out with full truth. Nathan tells the story. Listen to it. One through four. Listen to it. <laughs> and the Lord sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing. Well, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up and nourished, and it grew up together with him and with his children. <laughs> it did eat of his own meat and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. I should have took a picture last night. Jana Maria gave Tinks a bath. I should have took a picture. This is it right here. Missed it. Gave Tinks a bath. Comes into the kitchen. Sits down. Got the towel. Got, the, got Tinks there. And Tinks sprawled out and going to sleep while she... You know, I'm like, it's a dog. You know, and she's got to put lavender on. It's a dog. <laughs> but I see now, I see now. Little you lay him here. Look, look, look. Lay in his bosom. That's just what Tinks was doing. All four. That's like ridiculous. She's like, and Janice like, see how much he loves me? He loves me. I say, he loves you because he missed you and you've been out. And you're his mother. And I shouldn't be looking after him. But I'm going to get there after the day. <laughs> I'm going to get into that. I'm going to go back to the scripture. <laughs> and was unto him, look at this, a lamb. And was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress it for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb. And dressed it. I don't mean put clothes on it. And dressed it. I mean slaughtered that thing. Put some herbs or what not. Right. And dressed it for the man that was come unto him. Now you would have thought. that I was reading this. You would have thought that by verse 3. Yeah. Verse 3. David would have gotten fidgety. Uh -huh. <laughs> Figuring out that the story reminded him of someone. Uh huh. But no, when you are right in your own eyes, it is difficult for the light of your understanding to be opened up. Nathan sets up the story well. There's a, there's a difference. There's a difference between this stack and this stack. There's a difference. Which stack you want, mama? Do this one over here. Which stack you want, Diallo? You want it the most. If somebody had to borrow it from you, Diallo, they could take one of these. You'd be all right. But if you only had one, just one. But I'm telling you, rich people think differently. I'm watching the news. Why would I be in debt $26 million? I'm walking through the house and $60 million all together. You, you would have to watch the news to know it. I'm walking through the house getting sixty million dollars. I'm trying to get to sixty thousand. Thirty thousand. <laughs> Six I ain't gonna owe I owe somebody sixty million. I said, Lord have mercy. But rich people, that's that don't mean much to them. <laughs> I need you to understand that so that you can understand what's going on. Why David is blinded at this moment. The rich man had it all. The poor man had one. I mean, the poor man had this one ewe lamb, little female lamb. And as it were, she ate at his table. The, the poor man gave the little ewe lamb its own cup. 
sat at the table with his children. Why God wants to put it that way? Because he wants to show intimacy. He wants to show connectivity. He wants to show the intimate care of this scene right here. And this is what I need for you to understand is that the devil is after your you lamb. He's after whatever is closest to you, what's closest to your heart, what you hold precious. That's, that's what God is telling us. What you value most, it doesn't matter how much the enemy has, he's coming after what you think is precious. How did David go from being satisfied, sitting among sheep, to now conniving to kill someone? The poor man was so attached to this little ewe lamb that he treated it as a child. It ate at their dinner table. Oh, how precious this one and only one little ewe lamb was to him. You can see that by the time the story was completed, that David, who indeed in previous times had learned to defend, was now mad at the rich man. David, his old instincts. Oh God, <laughs> I got a holy, I got a dear holy ghost. Sometimes when you're going through something, Sister Tammy, you may take away your praise and worship temporarily. God will show you something so your instincts can kick back in, huh? So your instinct, your natural ability to worship, your natural ability to praise. Ah, uh, he'll cause something to happen and it'll trigger you. It'll wake you up to remind you of who you are so you will come through that situation that wanted to take you out. You'll come through with a great testimony. His old instincts kick in. His instincts kick in. He's now defensive. Mm-hmm. Five and six, and David's look at it. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Hmm. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb of force foe because he did this thing because he had no pity. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? I see sometimes as God's people, we're going to say the right thing, but we don't have the deep meaning of the thing that we say. Then the prophet Nathan dropped the bomb. <laughs> Seven, eight. <laughs> Seven, here it is. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Oh, Lord. In essence, David had been so drawn away by his own lust that it had led him to kill. David, upon hearing this story, Nathan wanted him to take a mirror. Yeah. See yourself there? You see yourself there, David? David, that's you. David, you're the rich man. David, you're the one. You're the one that took the ewe lamb. You know what you did with Uriah's wife? Huh? You know how you set it up? I'm talking about you. You king of all, you're the king of Israel. Got all the money at your back and call. Got all the servants at your back and call. You're the one. Nathan, God said Nathan for the mirror exercise. God said Nathan so that, listen, you couldn't see yourself. And so now I'm going to give you a picture of the one to be convicted. And I'm telling you that unless we get it right with God at home or God on our job or God wherever, God's going to then send you to the mirror exercise. Somebody's going to come to you and try to tell you who you are. I hope when they do, you listen. So rather than having the mirror activity, David did the magnifying glass activity. Ain't me. Who's that? Must be you. Must be you. It ain't me. Look at you. Y'all sure are not big. It's not me. It's you. It's you. See, one thing I learned to do, and I have witnesses here that have known me from two, one. It, I have always been willing to say, all right, my bad. I was wrong and move on. But I'm telling you, the toughest people to have walk in purpose are those that never can handle a mirror. Always.
guys want to make the preacher and the pastor think it's the pastor when I know what God's spirit is saying. And if we want to grow so that we can get back in purpose like David, then we're going to have to, why do you think we all could give me a clean heart? Renew a right spirit within me. David was saying, my God, I, I need to put away the magnifying glass. God, it's me. Ha, creating me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Take not ha, thy Holy Spirit from me. I need the Holy Spirit. I need the convictor. I need the one who will tell me when I'm about to do wrong. The convictor. Magnifying glass. And, 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 and listen. Since age about seven, eight. Since that last Easter, I can tell you what the purse looked like. I've never had a purse. So if it's one per female, some people witnesses, my armor bearers that have helped me, helped me for, I'm 50, for at least 25 years, they've never seen a mirror in my bed. Because I'm always depending on the Holy Spirit to be my mirror. Show me who I am as I desire to lead God's people. David missed the mirror exercise because he was holding on. His anger was kindled. Did you read that? I'm sorry, his anger was greatly kindled, magnified, but he never saw himself. He saw somebody else. The Bible says in James 1 and 15, then when lust hath conceived it, bring it forth sin, and sin when it's finished, bring it forth death. Something, something is going to die when you cross God's rules. You know, we look at literal death. That's not what it always means. You know, I'm saddened when I saw ministry in people, but they got they're back up. And now they're doing nothing as far as ministry when I know ministry was in them. Huh? That type of thing, it, it grieves me. Because I understand that when you miss God, you miss your destiny. So we've got to yearn, and I, I want us to do this, yearn to be, God, am I all right? Is that okay? Am I good, God? Hmm? Something is going to die. I don't want your ministry to die. I don't want your leadership to die. I don't want the blessing that you are to the church, to the kingdom to die. So what died? What died? And David has, has missed it. What died was, listen to this, his close relationship with God. You think David had the skill as a ruddy youth to take a slingshot and to hit him in the one spot? That, that slingshot was guided by the power of Almighty God. His relationship with God died. Now it actually triggers conviction and repentance. Because he said, me? It is me? And that's why we have that beloved chapter 51. Creating me a clean heart. Yeah, it's me. Finally. Number three, he got it. The consequences. He got it. The consequences. All right. Nine. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife. What I want to say here, I always say it, and I hope you get it. He killed Uriah. God never says Uriah's widow. He says, Uriah's wife. Because it's been done in an illegal way. So where you should have been able to take the widow. No, you still got his wife. Because the way you did it was wrong. If you do it right, you'll get it right. I'm going to do it right. And so thou hast taken his wife to be thy wife. <laughs> and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now. Let me define the word despise. It says, wherefore hast thou despised the commandment? God is saying, you know, the one that said, the Lord is my shepherd. God is saying, you now despise me. 
<laughs> Me and David despises you. The word despise comes from the Hebrew word baza, means hold in contempt, disdain. The word's heavy. David actually disdains God. When you see people, they were all up in church, the greatest worshipers and the whatnot and whatnot, and they're nowhere around. Disdain. Something has happened that has separated them from the love of God. So when you look at them, you're like, wow, man, they used to be in church doing A, B, and C. When you separate from God and you refuse to be convicted, you're go- you can be turned over to a reprobate mind. You lost your mind. I don't ever want to lose my mind. Oh no, he woke me up this morning with my mind stayed on him. He takes me through every day. I passage things that I think through the mind of God. Sometimes I miss it. And I can immediately say, God, straighten that up. God, help me to think right. Because I got to speak right. Because Bermuda got to see me walk right. I got to be right. Why? So that I have the right to be a leader in God's house. This is David. God knows what's in David. God knows the future that's in David. God knows the ability that's in David. God knows the purpose that's in David. And God knows the enemy is going to come after the purpose. But God is so merciful. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. He's a loving, kind God so that he says, listen, I've got so much for you. I've got to bring you through this moment. You should die, but let me see what I'm going to do. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. on. The lover of God, God's precepts and God's presence had allowed his flesh. Oh, come on now. Do I need a park there? Huh? Don't nobody look crooked? Just keep your head straight. I'll tell you what, you can love God all you want if you don't keep your flesh under subjection. Oh yeah, we are, there's a few of us that can testify, huh? That, that one week you were worshiping God and during the week you did something you know God was not pleased with. You see, so let's not look at David and, and not understand that it's only God's mercy and grace that keeps us from being exposed. Oh God, we've got to be Self-convicted. Self-convicted. I want to be self-convicted. Look at this, look at this, look at this. God said that David despised the commandments of God. We're in the Old Testament. And listen, under the Old Covenant, (laughs) if you break one, you're guilty of them all. Come on, am I talking right, teacher? Uh Uh-huh. And so, according to the old covenant, let's find which one. Thou shalt honor thy father. He was guilty of number seven. But under this ten commandments, he's now guilty of them all. Because actually seven caused him to commit six, which means that he's actually committed number one. And number one must be number one for a reason. Because it says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So actually, when you break any of God's laws, it means that you've placed your God, the God of yourself, above God. So I remind you that when you break one, you break it all. So David is guilty of breaking the laws, the law of God. Not only had David literally committed the sin of adultery, he was also guilty of murder. David was guilty of the law, and under the law, there were consequences. Let me tell you something here. Let me tell you something right here. Um, Elder, we better be thankful we're not under the law. Augustus would be given 24-7. There'll be a funeral every five minutes. This island population will drop from 60 to 40 in two weeks. Am I talking about it? Can I help somebody else further in case you think I don't know what I'm talking about? And at least half or maybe one third of them would be church people. Y'all don't want to be real. And that's why we can't get real deliverance. But if you get real, if you confess for real, then you get real deliverance. And you can be a real witness for the kingdom. Let me help you out, Old Testament. Let me help you out. He ain't worthy. He's not, he is not worthy right now even of the law. <laughs> Take care of it like that. Now let's see what the law is saying. Why we want to celebrate we're not law keepers in the old covenant. Huh? Leviticus 20 and 10. 
And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, well, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, whoever's wife, the adulterer, him, and the adulteress, her, shall surely be put to death. That's the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 22 and 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. I'm telling you, on the Old Testament, God said, oh, I know how to get rid of evil. Under the, I'm telling you, that's why we, we got to learn to appreciate grace. I, 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 listen, I'm not even thinking about you. I'm thinking about me. Thank you, God. I would have been dodging bullets, dodging lightning bolts. Woo, watch it now. Just missed that one. Forgive me, God, quick, but forgive me. Hey, 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 hey. See, what we don't want to do, and I want to be careful about this, for where God is taking this church. We don't want to appear as a church without sin. A church where we're not missing it. We want to be a church that understands that when we sin, when we miss it, we have an advocate. And we really don't want to keep missing it. We really don't want to sin anymore. We want to do better. That's where we're going. Under the law, God's his word is clear. Adultery under the law results in death. Hence, in verse 13, I'll listen to this in chapter 12. And David said unto Nathan, David knew the law. Um, <laughs> when somebody tells you you're about to go to the gallows, you, you, anyway. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. The Lord already knew that, right? And he gave me time to be convicted. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin, for thou shalt not die. Yeah. Let me help you out. All right. I said it earlier, something has to die. Yes. And God would receive justice by the law through the death of the child. Yes. Yes. You see, the living child, I'm in the Old Testament, <laughs> the living child would be an indicator yes. that God permits a spirit of the weakness of adultery yes. to lead his people. Can I, can I say that? Can I? Can I get the church, not just Shekinah, but every church to understand that God is still a holy God, that God still requires holiness, and that if a leader, this is the leader now, I'm talking about the leader, but mind you now, we're all royal priesthoods, they're good to you too, but how much more the leader? You can't have, hear me! Sermon finished Thursday night. I had to push it through, push it through Thursday night. God saying, listen, what, what they may fall to, you can't! Your mouth too big in public. Too much to say. Nobody should be able to point the finger and say that you committed adultery. Nobody should be able to point the finger and say you were drinking down at the bar, clubbing, going soaker, doing smoking this, smoking that. Nobody, this topic, should be able to say that you've been involved in a lesbian relation. Nobody. Why? Because you're the leader. And the accountability of leadership. We've got, let me tell you what, let me tell you an issue with the church. Let me talk to you, Janice. Come here, Grandma. Call you Janice for the purpose. Let me tell you the issue. Let me take off my heels. How tall are you? How short are you? Okay. No, I'm going to show you something. Five, three like me? Yeah. Look at us. This, this is actually an issue that we face. I'm going to help you right now. We face the issue of, well, you're no better than me. We're all equal at the foot. We're just as good as you. God speaks to us too. Yeah, yeah, the pastor, but you're no better than us. I'm gonna have you do. Are you really? You want to prepare the sermon for next week? You want to take the the uh, uh, beating from the public that I take? No, no, no. Stay right there. No, 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 no. There's a reason that God has elevated me, huh? Some things that you might have been able to um, fall prey to. God said, no, I'm going to make this strange girl that hasn't done a whole lot of stuff. She ain't perfect, but she's a strange girl because I need her for such a time as this. And so I want you to be clear here at Shekinah Worship Center. I am not you and you are not me. It's, it can't be that way. I must be more accountable. 
all right, all right. What's God doing here? If he let the child, listen, if he let that child, if he let that child live, that child <laughs> would have ascended to the throne of David. He's the first son. And so God would now have that the first son, the first leader, uh, uh, the, the leading voice, the one who is over all of his people, is a result, watch this, of adultery, the very crime that he is always telling his people, stop going, pouring after other gods. The Lord thy God is one God, and you should serve him. God was constantly saying, be faithful to me, be faithful to me. How could he then permit an unfaithful king and the, and the result of his unfaithfulness to them be at the throne? I'm telling you, this is under the law. Take me somewhere. I'm not going to leave you in the law. I'm not going to leave you there. But I'm going to show you something. The people would have learned, you know what? And this is what they're learning today. I, I can do a little this and that and still be a preacher and a pastor. I can do that. Well, got it. Well, they locally, overseas. Certain, certain pastors, I'm telling you, I, I love this man, the way he preaches. But I have stopped listening to him over the last few years. And I said, give him a break. Listen, now he's going to done it again. Some of you don't know. Reverend Jamal Bryant. Yes. What kind of females can stay in this man's congregation when he keeps on having children? Oh. But his eloquence of speech. Come on, David. Go and say, yeah, you may be able to speak. You may be able to see, you may be graceful, oh, and you're good looking too, but I'm telling you what, you still must suffer the consequences for what you did. So church, because David was not convicted, this led to his conviction through the death of his seed. You must seek to be convicted through self-conviction. If not, convict Shun will catch up with you and you will be convicted. And your being convicted makes somebody a convict. And in this situation, it was the little baby that was made the convict. So the baby, I can, I can preach something right here, you know. Can I show you a picture of something to come? This child took on the sin of David like the Lamb of God would take on our sin. Well, I can't teach that today. It's a whole another half an hour. People got things to do. <laughs> But God is always showing pictures of how I give you a break. You, you, David, you're going to get over this. Watch this now. Here, catch this. Catch. <laughs> David, as bad as this is, as bad as this loss is, you're going to get over it. And then the next child that you bring forth, going to have more wisdom than you ever thought of. His name's going to be Solomon. Why? Solomon, because you've learned from what you've done. You've learned wisdom with understanding. Oh, God, will, God will bring you through. God will bring you through. Now, let me tell you the conviction. How should David have been convicted? Let's go through it. David should have been convicted when he saw Bathsheba on the roof that evening. Hello? David should have been convicted when he asked about it. You guys, who's, who's? David should have been convicted when he sent for Bathsheba. David should have been convicted after he took her, wasn't volunteer, took her and slept with her. David should have been convicted when she became pregnant. David should have been convicted when he had Uriah murdered. All those opportunities. He listens to the story and say, who's that man? I'm telling you, all those times. All those times he should have been convicted. He hears a story and can't even pick up the analogy. I'm telling you, sin will blind you to the logical pathway of the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes I listen to people like when they say a man and a man should be together. I'm like, what kind of, what, what? And I realize that they ain't got no conviction. They don't know about the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will tell us, I was in the beginning and I breathed into man the breath of life and I was there when God brought uh, Adam to, I was there when it happened. I say here, church, be glad when you are convicted of wrongdoing. Hey, hey, be glad now. 
Glory to Jesus. Be glad when God's Holy Spirit can stop you in the midst of your track, even before you sin. How about that? You were on your way. You had started to conceive a thought, but the blessed Holy Spirit. Hey, I'm going to tell you. I can remember. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. I was about 15, 16. I had my bike. I was about 17 years old. I liked this guy. You know who he is, right? This other girl liked him. Right? I'm going to tell you about this story. Tell you, Holy Ghost will stop you in your tracks. And, and she was liking my guy. I'm 15, 16. Liking my guy, 16. And had said something about me. That weren't nice. And I was kind of, I was building up courage because I'm going to confront this. I'm going to, I can do this. I can do this. And, and when I see him, I'm going to slap him. <laughs> and I'm going to build up. I'm, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I can tell you where it was. The corner at K, um, what's it? FC Foot, you where? Right across from there. Of all the times I'm walked in town, I see her. So I'm gonna build up. I said, I'm gonna slap, I'm gonna slap, I'm gonna slap her, I'm gonna slap her. So I go to put my hand like this, a wall, I'm telling you, a wall, like I felt boom, and I couldn't move my hand any further. Like, I said, okay. And I know the Holy Spirit enough to say, you're a stupid sight. You're gonna ruin your testimony from a big headed girl. Are you out of your mind? Right? And so God, that's not, I know my, my stories are like funny because I'm just not got that type of serious. To me, that was serious because Holy Spirit was saying, don't put things, don't take things into your own hands. Uh huh. You doing that can be a mark for the rest of your life. Somebody right now today, if they say, no, no, she's got a Tampa boy. She go around slapping and killing, you know, all that type of stuff. So God had to stop me at age 16, 17 to understand, don't Mark your life with sin. Don't miss the mark. Don't have to go to church the next time and feel guilty and, oh, Lord, have to run to the altar. Just, I'm telling you, that's the way I think. That's the way I think. Understand me. Be glad when the Holy Spirit stops you. Don't celebrate when you, you do the deed and then you feel guilty. No, 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 no. Be glad when he stops you. Thank God we are under grace and not under law. Therefore, we may not physically die now. Uh, however, I promise you that many a Christian, many a preacher of God's word have had the ministry fall into disrepair and die because they refuse to be convicted. I'm going to be convicted before you convict me. Uh huh. When you are wrong, run to God's threshing floor. Lord have mercy. He spoke that. He said, Maria, anytime the child of God, a child of mine is wrong, all they've got to go to is the threshing floor. Because the threshing floor is a place of separation. That when you confess your sin, God will separate the sin from you. And then you will be useful wheat. You'll be able to be planted. You'll be able to grow. You'll be able to be food for the house of God. And I'm telling you today, there's a necessity, director, in conviction. 